again. Let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. Wherever you, where you might be, you can be sure that God is by your side. He doesn't change. He doesn't fail. And he surely will bless you. Let me, let me read a verse for you, which talks about what God can do for you. First, uh, it's Romans 8, verse number 11. It says the following. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, who is the Holy Spirit of God? He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. He is talking about the Holy Spirit here, who God sent down there in hell when Jesus had died and twice separated from God, and after that he died physically. And then, after he had defeated the devil, despoiled the devil, the Holy Spirit went down there, and he then gave life to Jesus. He gave him life again. And then Jesus, almighty Jesus, got out of his grave, let Satan down there, and his demons eternally defeated, and he resurrected. If, it's saying here, if you believe in this, and if it was true, and it was true, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, if you have the Holy Spirit of God, you had this experience with God, and you were filled with the Holy Spirit, he who raised Christ from the dead, who is the Lord Jesus, will also give life to your mortal bodies. My brother, if you are stiff, you are paralyzed, you can't move your arm, your leg is stiff, you can't bend down your back, your thoughts are all paralyzed, it feels like you turned into a robot, the Holy Spirit can give you life today to, to your mortal body and give life to it again. And then you will receive this energy and you'll be healed. And how long does it take for him to do a miracle like this? It takes less than a split second for him to do that. It's faster than the blink of an eye. It's God who operates. So today, let's believe it. It's communion day. It's blessing day. And sure enough, God will operate here and he'll do great wonders in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's watch a person who has received a blessing in one of my services, shall we? Four years ago, I had a surgery. I couldn't do anything. And then I came all the way from Cristalina just to receive this what blessing. What surgery was it? Back surgery. What couldn't you do? I couldn't get down like this. I couldn't go like this. But look, girl, you, you were already touching the ground with both of your hands. But I couldn't do this at all. Four years. I left home to come here from Cristalina. I came alone, but with faith in God. And was it worth coming? Yes. How did you walk with this problem? I, 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 I walked, but I couldn't stand up. I, I would be more sitting than standing. Now give the lap of victory here. <laughs> Bend down again, please. Go on, go on. Oh, glory to God. She said, oh, glory. And let's applaud Jesus, right, folks? So then... If God has operated in her serious condition, why can't he operate in you? Let us believe in it. God was in Brasilia. God is here. God is in this person's home and wherever the person is. Another person who has received a blessing, please. What has God done now? Healed my knee. What was wrong it's with this knee? It's been five years since my knee was swollen and crooked. And even my leg is getting crooked. How did you walk before? I walked with a limp. All the time with a limp. My children wanted to buy me a stick. I said, I'm not a cripple. Then walk normally now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Our God is beautiful. And to him, a round of applause. Right, folks? Okay, then. But how about overseas? Does God operate? Let's watch another case which happened down in Africa now. I've been there recently at the beginning of the month. And Jesus is the same, folks. Jesus is always ready to do wonders. Roll this testimony in Africa, will you? What was your problem? Pain in my legs, both legs, and in my knees. Were you walking normally or not? No, How I could not How did you used walk. to walk before the prayer? Slowly, very slow, yes. Very slowly. Walk freely now in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. <laughs> Maria, you can go. And let's applaud Jesus, right, folks? Our God is tremendous. You know, we only have joy with Jesus. 
We are going now to study the Word of God in 2 Chronicles. We are almost done with, with the study of the victory of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the, was the king of Judah, and they made a confederation of nations, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the people of Syria, of Syria, and everywhere, to come against Jehoshaphat. And when he heard that, he feared, because it was a multitude, serious stuff. It was meant to destroy him. But he was of God. He went into the presence of God. He prayed, and he proclaimed the people. They did a fast. And in the last service, we've seen this prayer, the different parts of his prayer, which he said, when we are attacked by any evil, we have to do the very same thing, to come before God and show him our needs, to ask the Lord's intervention, and God will then operate. And when he operates, it is impossible to be different. The operation of God, it brings the answer. And when it does so, it's through the word. My brother, without me, Jesus is the word of God, you can do nothing. And then they started to speak, uh, they, they spoke to God, and then what happened? Where we started now, uh, in verse number 14, in Second Chronicles 20. It is written in the following way. By the time they finished praying, they were in a ver verse 13. It says that all Judah stood before the Lord. How beautiful it would be if the entire Christian church could stand, starting with ours, right? We have to set the example. Stand before the Lord, but some have fallen. Some are hiding. Others are desperate. What if they catch me? No, we have to be in holiness, standing before the Lord, without any type of condemnation. And then in verse number 14, it says this, Then the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the assembly, and he comes, and now it's time to, he is speaking and he'll speak, came upon Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaf. And Jezael said, Listen to all of you, Judah. And you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Je Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. In other words, God has taken the control of the battle. Hey, my brother, when you feel that God is telling you that he has taken control of the battle, you can praise God and forget about it because the enemy won't be able to, to do anything against anyone anymore. And what has happened? And here come the instructions. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Zis, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Dezirel. You will not need to fight in this battle. All your battles can be like this, okay? If you seek God, position yourselves and still stand and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear, again he is saying this, or be dismayed. Remember these two orders here. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. So you can go in peace. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord worshiping the Lord. They stood up to receive the orders. They received the orders. They bowed. Always do this in life. God has spoken. Bow before him because there is a blessing coming for you. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those, those who should sing, Who is there? Then come all the singers uh, to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy, his art of doing good endures forever. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, pay attention now to this, it wasn't before nor after that. It's necessary to grow in the faith so that you can do the same thing, sing and praise. The Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. 
For the people of Ammon and the Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. In other words, God creates confusion amongst the enemy. The demons may all be battling against you. With the work of God, they start to fight against each other there, and they lose the, the, the direction that they had to be able to harm us. And now it says this, So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, Judah didn't even see all that, not even the battle they saw. What happened then? They looked toward the multitude. Was everybody fighting? No. And there were dead bodies, there were dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. My brother, God wants to do a great victory in your life. Bow your head and close your eyes. Father, thank you for your word. Truthful, powerful, holy. Word which never loses a battle. And God, help us, teach us, O oh God, to learn these lessons. Help us out so that we can do it in such a way which you'll take care of everything. And we will only see the victory, only see the victory. And any defeat, when we see it, it will be the enemy's defeat. Thank you, Lord. And I bless all of these people. Father, in the name of Jesus, amen. Now look up at me. Any of you who have a problem from the waist down, especially in the knees and in the ankles, and who would like a prayer, come here because the time has come for you to be blessed now. Pastor Jaime, come here because you'll help me pray here. God hasn't brought you here for nothing, though. No. God hasn't brought you here to be defeated. He has brought you here to make an operation in your life. Bow your head and close your eyes. Focus on your faith. My God, I ask you now, oh, powerful God, come now with your power over these people who are up front and those who are at home as well, who have a back problem in the joints of the hips to the thighs in the knees, torn ligaments, atrophic and wasted meniscus, worn out char cartilage, a defective kneecap. God, down there in the ankle, in the tendon, wherever the evil is set now, Father, we bind all forces of the enemy. Oh my God, I ask you now, use Pastor Jaime so powerfully at this very moment and for your glory, Lord. Father, we know that your power is operating. Just like that day Jehoshaphat didn't have to shed a single drop of blood. God, it was you who did all the work. God, here it is not by power nor by might. It is by you doing the work. It's a touch of the Lord in these people's lives from the top of their heads all the way to their feet. Jesus touched them. Touch especially these people who are, my God, suffering with pain in the head of the femur. These people who can't even move their knees, Father. Or these people who have ankle problems. Those people who have a poor circulation. People who suffer from phlebitis. Those who suffered an accident. Those people who had a stroke. And those who can't move the way they should move. Oh, but I call on your power now, Lord. I call upon the manifestation of your grace the powerful anointment of your spirit passing here among us. Oh, and all evil, whatever they are, they will fall flat right now. They will come out in the name of Jesus. Father, Father, visit them now. Manifest your power in these people right now. The gifts of your spirit, gifts of healing, gift of faith, gift of operating wonders. It's now, my brother. I join you in prayer. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, I say, evil, come out of these people now. Go away. In the name of Jesus Christ, I demand arthritis, arthrosis, bursitis, rheumatism, osteoporosis, tendonitis, deviation of the spine, herniated disc, the inflammation and the numbness of the leg, the knee. It might be even a work of witchcraft or sorcery which was done against these people. An evil spirit who is following this man or a demon who is possessing this man or possessing this woman and this person can't find an explanation. Come out, jump out now you unclean spirit. Spirit of disease, let go of these people. From the top of their heads to the sole of their feet, I order 
that all of the snare of the devil will be undone now, be broken, be cancelled in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands and say, thank you God. Say, thank you Lord. I take hold of the blessing in the name of Jesus for the glory of the Father. Amen. Glory to God. Don't think twice. Do what you couldn't do before. Go on now. Move it. Come on, move your feet. Stomp your feet. Step on the devil's head and declare, I am more than that. I can see smiles now. <laughs> there are already people smiling. Come on then, it's not just a back problem. In the name of Jesus, raise your arms, you couldn't raise. Bend the legs, you couldn't bend. Can anyone say, I'm healed now, pastor, and I'm smiling? You in red, tell me, brother. I'm in my calf, pastor. It's, it's come gone out in now. the name of you, Jesus. You there, the brother beside him, what happened? I fell down, the pain is gone. You fell down. Yeah, I you hit, hit my your knee, knee on the and floor. you were in pain? Yeah. It's gone. Yes, it's gone. You sister, you said you couldn't get down before? Jeez, it's been a long time. So the do what you couldn't was... do before. It was this, look. Look, look. Now you can bend down. And this, look. I am 66 years old, Pastor Jaime. You're a young and girl I've now. And I've had three head traumas. My hips are displaced and problem in both knees. Wow. They had no cartilage. How... I couldn't do this. I haven't How been able to this, do this folks? for Just years. Just listen to that. She hasn't been able to do this for years. <laughs> I had years. a stroke. I suffered a stroke. I've already had irregular heartbeat. But Jesus, look. He's restored Jesus, you completely. Yeah, Jesus doesn't want me to you be. You couldn't do that for you, many years? No, it's been a long time. A I long don't even time. Know oh, Jesus, do it one years. more time. Look. Oh, glory to God. How beautiful, <laughs> folks. I'll talk to you in a second. How about you now? My knee, Pastor. I what about it? I couldn't even do this. For how long but have you been able to do better, that? Thank God. For how long have you been able to do it's that? It's been around three months. Three Pastor. months, and now I can I've bend it. Like Glory to God. Let's hear this brother here in the blue flag. It's gone now. It's come out. A headache. A headache. You had a strong a headache. headache really? is gone. Now it's gone. Amen. This brother here, tell me what happened. I had a pain in the chest. A pain in the yes, chest, but it's, it's gone. gone. Glory to Amen. God. Here. The Pastor, my back, this section around here, I've been preparing my great-grandson's trousseau, and then I have to put a cushion here, another one there, but now look. Look how beautiful, folks. Just look at that. She's a young girl my again. My fingers, yeah. She said she had you to know? put, when she moved because of the pain, she yes. had to put a pillow here and a pillow here because of that. Now she's moving just fine. Even my fingers. They were sore? Now they are all it's fine. It's gone now. How beautiful. It's gone. Glory to God. The young man over there, tell me, what happened? I had two accidents. One of them, I broke my hips. The other one, I broke my femoral neck. I couldn't get down. My knee you would have hurt in my hips. hips. And I've been to the doctor this week. I've done a resonance test. Thank God he came back alright. You know, but he hurts. But could you get down? No pain. Get down now, young man. Get down. You couldn't do that before? No, I did. I, I did, but it, it hurt. hurt. So I couldn't no do it. That's beautiful. How about you, sir? What happened? Tell me. What happened? You know, Pastor Jaime, the week before last I've done, I've done a surgery. You've done a surgery? And then I... And uh, the region was very sore? It was sore all over, and I couldn't even sleep. I had to place a pillow so I wouldn't lean on it And is here. the pain gone now, my friend? And now, look... That's beautiful, folks. Look thank at God, it. Thank God, I'm Go just Lord fine. Go to God, amen. How about you, sister? My ankle. Usually at night because it's a spur, you know. Yes. It hurts at night because I spend so the whole day standing. Yes, but I've already stepped hard on really? it. Really? And it don't it's feel pain? It's not sore anymore. And my Glory head. God. It's How gone. about you, sir? Tell me. It was hurting at home. And twice I heard it on the radio. And I was praying and I felt it. And then I got here and it was hurting. But look. Look now. So put the it's kid gone. on your shoulder now. Put it there. Yeah. How beautiful is this, folks? Glory to God. Jesus is good, right? Raise your hands like this, all of you. Afterwards, we'll hear more testimonies. Say thank you, Lord, for your blessings in our midst. You may take your seats now in the name of Jesus. Amen? Let's watch the real-life drama now. I've hit my right leg very hard, you know, and then after that, it got swollen, you know. I had to go to the doctor, and the doctors made a surgery, right? They took out that clotted blood, you know, and I had to walk on crutches. I couldn't get rid of them because I couldn't walk. After getting hit on her right leg, Irene cannot touch her foot on the ground. I had to keep it hanging, a crutch on either side. That's how I walked. Uh, Sister Irene started to attend, uh the services and she walked with a cane right she would often ask someone to to go pick her up at her house uh, so she could go to church 
Besides congregating in the Grace of God Church, Irene feeds on the Word by TV, thanks to The Faith Show. I had dinner very quickly and I would turn on the TV in order to watch it. I was a sponsor of the show. Afterwards, I stopped and then I started to sponsor again. This idea of stopping, I would never stop sponsoring again. I say, oh my God, heal my leg. So many people are getting healed. And then she uh, uh, got rid of her cane. She said, I'm going to be healed. God will complete his work, right? Because I got rid of the cane, but I still walk with a limp. And she would come and lean on us, you know, to get into the church, to get up the stairs. When Dr. Suarez came to Curitiba, we then invited her. And she said, hey, can you, could you take me to church? Because I'd really like to go there and I will be healed. He called me and said, would you like to go to that service? I said, I do. Then be ready because we'll come to pick you up and take you there. And then we packed the car and went to the service. The convoy takes Irene to the service in Curitiba on the 1st of September, 2014. That night, moved by the Holy Spirit of God, Dr. R. R. Suarez prays for the brethren who had problems in their legs. Come down with your power here over the lives of all of these people and heal them. From the waist down to the hips, the joints of the hips to the femur. Oh, Father, down there in the knee, in the cartilage, in the meniscus, in the kneecap, and whatever is in there, I rebuke this evil and I say, come out! in the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, do now whatever you couldn't do before. Come, come here because I will confirm your blessing now in the name of Jesus. When I got near Dr. Suarez, I thought I was in heaven, you know? Thank God. And then he asked me, what happened to your sister? And I told him. And here I felt a pain coming up, you know? I couldn't take the pain, the pain in my leg. How long have you been like this? Well, I guess about a month. A month. And what couldn't you do because of this pain? Well, everything. Did you walk badly? Badly. How did you walk? I walked with a limp. Then walk for me. Show me how you did it. Don't overdo it, nor underdo it. Do it like you did before the prayer, like this. Yes. Then take a few steps over there, and I did. Come, now walk back. Irene of Jesus, walk properly. Walk properly. Glory to God. <laughs> the sister then received her healing, and she left the church completely blissful. She was practically running, you know. When I left the church, I wasn't walking with the limp anymore. I go up and down the stairs. Over there, I go down almost running. The pain is gone. Thank God. Now I'm okay. Thank God. Glory to God, folks. Jesus is good, right? And you can see how God works. It all started when she was watching the faith show. God started working in her heart, moving her heart, and she kept on feeding by the word of growing. And that's what the faith show does. So let's go to the first question now, please. Doctor, if Jesus has already paid for our sins on the cross, why do we still live the consequences of those sins? My people are destroyed? For lack of knowledge, good question. Well, if I'm a Christian, I have received Jesus and I still suffer the consequences of those sins. A right not claimed for is a non-existent right. The Bible says in Romans 5.17 that if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more, those who receive uh, abundance of the grace and the gift of the righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. I mean, you come and you send all the evil away in the name of Jesus Christ to those things that you can't carry with you because Jesus has already carried for you. The Bible shows us this very clearly. When the people of Israel got into the promised land, who were they supposed to send away from that land, the inhabitants of that land? The same goes for us. When we were away from the Lord God, the evil demons have entered our territory, in our emotions, in our health, in our family. Today we have gone through the waters of the baptism, and we have entered, I mean, in a, in a covenant with God, in a new covenant. We have to send away the inhabitants of hell who are in our territory. So you have to do that, and if you don't do the work, the work won't be done, and you have to do the work of God. Second question. Why didn't Rachel want to be comforted as says in Matthew 2.18? This here, what he means when he says Rachel like this, he's not referring to a woman, but he's talking about the example of a, of a slaughter, you know? The, the slaughter of the children, you know? And this passage of the Bible is very profound. And it was said, Herod 
in a demonic act ordered the execution of all male children under two, which refers which refers to the times of Moses when the same thing happened to the children. And that's it. She she refused to be to be comforted, and this will happen in the Lord's day. Let's now do something very important. Let's open up our heart. Dr. Suarez, I've received Jesus in 1967, and since then, I started paying tithes and offerings. My husband, when he saw I had a commitment to God, he left home. After a while, I baptized, and after that, the Lord God has greatly blessed me. I have five children, and back then, I went through some tough times with them. Today I am a widow, and two of my children are in the presence of God. The others have gone astray. One of them is going through a very hard time. His wife cheated on him, and she takes pleasure on putting him down. He cries at her feet, begging her to come back, but she doesn't want him anymore. And that is why I've decided to sponsor the show in his favor so that the Lord Jesus may send deliverance to his life. I don't know what to do anymore. Dr. Suarez, I ask you to pray for the lives of my children and for some guidance for what I should do. Today is not Dr. Suarez, but it's Pastor Jaime. But let me remind you of something that's in the first question. You have to do God's work, no matter how faithful you are to God. If you don't do the work, your boat's going to turn over. Jesus says to his disciples, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Same thing goes to us. She's a woman of God. So use the authority of the name of Jesus to destroy the power of the enemy over your children and your daughter-in-law's life. But especially your children, because they are under your spiritual authority, okay? Raise your hand now. Let's pray for those who are at home, and then later on we're going to pray some more over here as well. Father, we send now a blessing to someone who is in the hospital, someone, my God, who is in a prison cell, someone at home with a great distress. Oh my God, you have already operated here, and you're operating right now. You're reaching homes as we speak. Speak, you're reaching someone who is afflicted, someone who is troubled. I am praying for someone who's feeling their heart sinking in their chests. For those people who are feeling the weight on their bodies, for that person who is feeling something weird in their lives, I am a minister of your word. To bless these people, to determine that all evil will come out, and I say evil, come out. Whether it's an anguish, whether it's a stress, whether it's fatigue, whether it's breathlessness, whether it's a headache, a weight in the body, whatever the evil it may be, get out now in the name of Jesus.